for watching this. Time is one of the most valuable commodities we have in life, and so I appreciate you taking a few moments to hear our thoughts on this current situation. Who knew that at the start of the year, the headlines would read like some sort of a science fiction novel? By now, you know that the novel coronavirus is changing life as we know it, at least in the short term. Across the country, events and conferences are canceled. The NBA has suspended its season. The NCAA has announced that March Madness will be played in empty arenas. The Big 12 has canceled its tournament. President Trump has canceled international travel to Europe for the next 30 days. And Brazil's president has tested positive for the virus. In addition, companies are requiring that employees work from home. And of course, the stock market has fallen precipitously this week. And because of the panic, the Wall Street Journal says that the economic uh, results will be a significant drag on growth for the year 2020. So that brings us to this. How do we respond as a church and as followers of Jesus Christ? In a time of crisis, no one should articulate clear thinking more than the church, and that's what we want to do today. We're called to live by the two great commandments, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. And so to honor God and to love our neighbor, there are some steps we need to take and some statements we need to make. First of all, the steps we need to take— Number one, myself, our other two pastors, and two other men met last week to make preliminary plans regarding this situation, so we aren't coming into it cold. Secondly, we need to stick to the facts. We're neither epidemiologists nor economists, so we want to follow the leadership of experienced people both in government and in health care. The CDC has valuable information we want to follow. I suspect that FEMA is going to be involved at some point. And so we want to follow the lead of these authorities who are investigating the situation carefully. Number three, it's incumbent upon us as Christ followers to love our neighbor as ourself and therefore to mitigate the spread of this as much as we can possibly uh, do. The most vulnerable people among us are the elderly and the immunocompromised, which, by the way, would include me. So we'll take whatever action is necessary to do our part in mitigating this risk. Number four, right now, we believe that we have no reason to cancel services this Sunday. It will be business as usual unless we're otherwise instructed. And that holds true for next Wednesday night as well. Now, obviously, this is a very fluid situation, and so we'll adjust accordingly. But uh, for right now, we're going to, to follow our schedule as normal. Number five, if you don't feel well, stay home. That's true regardless of the spread of the coronavirus or any other uh, illness that you might have. Uh, we want you, of course, to, to wash your hands and, and uh Uh, do what's necessary to keep from spreading anything that you might have to someone else. But for certain, if you don't feel well, we do want you to stay home. Number six, we're making plans to have a virtual Sunday service if we have to do that. In fact, right now you can go to YouTube and go to our West Haven channel and you can subscribe to that. That's the platform we use to stream our services. And then when we go live, you should get a notification on your mobile device. So if that becomes necessary, if we have to have a quote-unquote virtual church service, I'll preach a sermon as normal. We'll ask you to watch it in your homes, and then we'll share that YouTube link also on Facebook. And then hopefully, with Facebook and with YouTube, we'll have some West Haven members to interact with people during the sermon. Um, And if this becomes necessary, we do want you to watch that because it's crucial that you be fed the Word of God on a regular basis. This is bread for our souls, and so... God has commanded that we gather together weekly. If we're unable to do that, we'll do the best we can with the technology that God has made available to us. Number eight, we're prepared to do a deep clean of our facility should that become necessary. And we've already done some cleaning, some extra cleaning in our uh, uh, children's ministry area uh, as well. So those are the steps we need to take. Here's some statements we need to make. Number one, I want to encourage you not to take this too lightly. 
we do have a responsibility to help mitigate this risk, as does every citizen of the United States of America. But number two, and I think you know this, but we need to say it, don't live in fear. The World Health Organization has declared this to be a pandemic. The word prefix pan just means all. It's worldwide, but it doesn't mean that everyone will get it. Our confidence is in Jesus Christ. He has given us power, love, and a sound mind, and so we'll think rationally, we'll think clearly, and he will see us through this. Let's not focus on the panic that surrounds us, but the Christ who sustains us. And remember that Colossians tells us our life is hidden with God. This life does not have the final word. The believer's certain hope is in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and the ruling, reigning Christ who lives today. All this is temporary. We're pilgrims who are traveling through a foreign land, and we know that he created every microorganism and cell and all that lives and breathes and has its being, and we will uh, follow him according to his sovereign wisdom wherever he leads us. Uh, I encourage you to check on your neighbor. Again, the most vulnerable population are those who are elderly and immunocompromised. Maybe your elderly neighbor is afraid to go out and get groceries. What, what a chance to serve them. So check on your neighbors, regardless of who they are, and then live with Jesus as your center. Maybe this pandemic has brought you to an awareness of your own mortality. We would love for you to join us this Sunday, especially if you don't have a church home. It could be that it's awakened you to your own mortality, and you have questions. You have questions about Jesus or the Bible or church. I would personally love to have that conversation with you, so feel free to reach out to me. My email address is mike at westhavenbaptist.org, and I'd love to have that kind of a, of a conversation with you in the days to come. Now stay tuned. This video might be terribly dated in 24 hours. As we said, the situation is very fluid, but we'll make whatever adjustments are necessary, and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. I want to pray with you, and then we're going to close. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you give us. We acknowledge that you are our creator and our sustainer. So in this time, as in all times, we put our faith and trust in you and completely in you. And we pray for those who are watching this video. I pray that you would bless them, you would encourage them, you would strengthen them, and you would reveal yourself through your word to them in greater ways in the days to come. We pray for those who have been already affected by this virus. We pray for those who are suffering with it. We pray for the caretakers and the caregivers as they help them through this. And we just pray for a positive outcome in every person's life. We love you, Lord, and we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you.